Hello, hello everyone, welcome to this video. I'm incredibly excited to get this started. I've been working on this for a while, for weeks, and it's finally ready to show you guys, right? And you can download the Geometry Node setup in the comments. It's gonna be two or three dollars. I haven't completely made my mind up yet, but it's gonna be cheap. It's not gonna be free because it did cost me a lot of time. I hope you can see that in this video as well. But let's get started. It's about the last of us, the fungus of the last of us, right? It looks amazing. If you watch the, the show, even in the game, stuff like that, it looks just so amazing how it's made. And well, I thought, can I create a geometry node setup out of that where it's going to be adding procedural fungus on any object that you throw at it, right? So that is what I made and it's finally ready. It took me a lot of cleanup to do, but it is ready, right? So I'm going to be showing it to you, explaining the steps. So if you buy it and you watch this video, you know exactly how to use it and what you can tweak and change. All right, so it consists of three different geometry node setups. I added a subdivision modifier as well because it does work best with a specific subdivision level. Um, but it's fine. If yours has a very high resolution, you don't have to do anything because I also included like a merge. The first node is the merge node. And it basically is gonna, well, easing up your mesh a little bit. So if you have a very dense mesh, it's gonna be merging some parts of it because it's gonna be looking overgrown and well, it's gonna basically be looking a little bit more dead, um, more um, degraded and stuff. So it doesn't have to incorporate all the small details of your mesh, right? So you can set this merge distance lower if you wanna keep more of your mesh details. You can also set it higher if you want it to look more like well, the, the original shape has been lost a little bit. All right, so that's that. what that's going to be doing. Um, so you can throw any mesh at it. Now, this first one, it is quite an important one, but also very small. There's one value, and it basically will set your geometry to a specific scale. The fingers generator is made for a specific scale. So it's going to be rescaling your mesh to that scale, and then after the fungus generator, it's going to be rescaling it back to your original skill. That's why I call it OG skill, right? And well, that value is basically going to define as well how big your fungus is going to be looking on your model, right? If you have a tennis ball, your fungus is going to look quite big compared to that ball, right? Because the ball is small, fungus has the same size, right? And if you're going to be adding it to a larger model, for example, Suzanne's head right here, or a deer, whatever, a human, um, it has to look smaller, right? The fungus has to look smaller because the model is larger, right? So that's what this is going to be doing. And I will show you how that looks later. Don't worry. Right, so I'm going to collapse that and now we're going to get to the main event, which is the fungus generator. I added a lot of um, customization options and this is not even the material right so this is only the looks of the model of the mesh that's going to be changed and i will walk you through that it's going to be a lot of fun so i'm going to enable this from the start and you'll be able to see what it looks like all right so the first one risk kills suzanne all right then i'm gonna first just enable the third one risk kills is back and then we're gonna do the magic right i'm gonna enable this it may take a few seconds depending on what um, what properties you set in there. But here we go, right? It adds fungus and materials to your mesh. And I can rotate this around and you'll be able to see what it's adding. So we've got different kinds of mushrooms. We've got the stems with the caps. We've got the oyster mushrooms right there on the sides. We even got the veiny mushrooms. And that is just looking amazing. And I even added a little detail on the parts where the fungus grows out of the mesh, right? So to make it look like it's growing from the inside of the of the mesh, for example, right here. You can see that it's looking like a scar or a flesh wound where the mushroom is growing out of. And same for, oh, let me get this back there, for example. We got like a little bit of scar, a little bit of wound tissue, right? Flesh. And well, that is just amazing, in my opinion. So I can rotate this however I want. There will be mushrooms anywhere and well that is basically how it turns any object into its fungus variant right and let, let's let me just walk you through these settings 
First one I showed you was the overall fungus kill. If I set this to one point, let's set it to one. If I set this to one, it's going to disappear, right? Because it is going to be merging or it's going to be scaling your object so, so, um, so small that it's not be, going to be able to add fungus. So you have to uh, keep this at like 0 0.8, 0 0.9. You can see that it's just going to be adding bigger parts of the mushrooms, right? Because now your object's going to look smaller as well, right? That's nice. Now, if I set this to like 0.5, that was the... Um, uh, oh, that's the merge distance. I'm changing the wrong one. If I set this to like 0.5 and set that there, it's going to be going back to what we had before as well. It's going to take a little bit of time um, to do the, the calculations. But you can see that the fungus looks way smaller already. And I think the default value was like 0. 0. 0.78 or 0. 0.65, something like that. So you can see that the smaller I set this, the smaller the fungus is going to look on our object, right? So the smaller we make this value, the, well, the bigger the object is going to look as well. So if I set this to like 0. 0. 0.35, and it's going to take a little while to make that happen because it has to add a lot more mesh as well to do more calculations. So we got to wait for that a little bit. So depending on your computer, also keep in mind that it can be a little bit tricky to go into those lower values for the scale. The default 1.65 usually works very well. So you can now see if we set this value to lower, it's going to add a lot more detail and small um, small mushrooms on there as well, right? And that's basically what the um, the focus scale is going to be doing. So I'm going to leave it at like 0.7 for this tutorial, just so it doesn't take forever to show you each of those properties. Right, so here we are. You can even see that those mushrooms are nicely intersecting and the mesh is nicely connected between the mushrooms and stuff as well. So that is just something I wanted to show. All right, well, first one, mesh merge distance. All right, I just wanna make sure that any high poly mesh can also be used. So it will merge it a little bit by distance, like I said before, right? I'm not gonna show you how that's gonna change. You know what merging by distance does by now, right? So that's fine. Let's, let me swipe this to the left. Now, the first one is the general fungus noise position. It's a W of the noise nodes, pretty much, right? So this is going to be defining where the, the mushrooms are on your mesh and where the oyster mushrooms are, where the, vi the veins are, the noise texture of the materials. So this is basically the general noise. So if I change that, you can see the entire fungus is going to be changing on your mesh as well, right? You basically get different seeds. And you can even animate that if you want to make the fingers move over your mesh. Uh, but you can get some very interesting new shapes with that, depending on the noise position, right? You can make this as big and small if you as, as you want yourself, right? So that's looking very, very nice. Now we've got this noise skill. And the main thing that's going to be defining is where the regular fungus mushrooms are going to be located and where those oysters are going to be and the veins as well. So I made the, the geometry node set up in a way where those mushrooms won't really be sprouting out from the same place to avoid overlapping geometry, stuff like that, and to keep it nice and clean, right? So it is going to be added on, well, pretty much one part is going to be added on the white part of the noise and on the black part. This is very, very easy, right? So that's basically what you can change. For example, if you want more intersecting parts of the oyster mushrooms and the general mushrooms then you can just set this noise to higher values for example let's try five and then it will be more more going through each other it will look like more of one one system right so there you can see it happening it's all going through through each other pretty much all right so let's set this back to one i really like them to be a little bit more separated right in nature that's usually the case as well things will be a little bit separated Right, now we've got the medium um, distance between the fungus. And that's basically those mushrooms, those bigger mushrooms. The minimum distance between those is something that I also wanted to have as, as a value that you can change. Uh, because, well, I've got this, um, this node setup added as well where you can... Well, you can see that the mushrooms are intersecting and they are like growing together at parts where they come close. For example, there. Right, so if you make them come very close, then they will have like a more grown together mesh. And if you separate them, well, then you will have mushrooms that really stand apart. All right, so you can change that. 
now we've got the fungus density. Well, that is of the mushroom. The mushroom fungus are all those sprouty ones. That's basically how many of those you will have on your mesh, right? It's as easy as that. So if I decrease that to 5, we will have less of those mushrooms. And if I increase that to 15, we will have way more of those mushrooms. It is that easy. Right, it's just the density of those mushroom fungus. Right, 15, I usually set this at like anywhere between 5 and 15 is what really works nicely. Now we've got the seed of those mushroom fungus. Right, so that's going to change the position of where those mushroom fungus are going to be sprouting out of. But it's also going to change the position of those oysters. Remember those oyster mushrooms, they're all pretty much integrated, right? So they depend on each other where they're going to be located. So if I change this seed, all of the other stuff in the mesh is also going to change, pretty much, all right? <laughs> so you can see it right here. The seed is a lot of fun to play around with to get some very interesting, nice shapes on your mushroom or to quickly play around with different, different things, all right? Looking really nice, looking real good so far. All right, now we've got the mushroom fungus curve resolution, all right? So we got the mushroom stems right there and they're very straight now and well, that's just, a little bit easier for your system to uh, to work with but you can give them some bending and some some noise pretty much right so if i set this resolution lower so re lower less resolution is going to mean in this case um a higher ge ge geometry count um so if i set this to like 0 0.5 we're going to be having a little bit more of those swirls in the stems and look at that area for example right here and um, let's set this even lower point two perhaps and it's gonna be really really making those mushrooms pop left and right curve you can see it right here the nice curve happening on the mushrooms so those stems are basically gonna be um well they're not gonna be straight but they're gonna be curling a little bit which is very organic very beautiful but it's gonna take a little bit more geometry to work with her system is not gonna like it as much but it still works quite fine Right, let's set this back to like 0.7 just to show you all the steps without having too much trouble with the system. <laughs> right, so we got the minimum length of the mushroom fungus and the maximum length as well, which means that we can just make the the fungus, the mushroom fungus longer and shorter if we want. So I can set this to two and we will have some of them very much sticking out more, right? Sticking out like that. Beautiful. We can also make them shorter. They will stay closer to the mesh. All right. Now you can do the same for the minimum distance. Um, if you want them to be at least a specific distance away from your mesh, then you can set that as well with the minimum one. Um, but yeah, play around with that as you want. All right. Now the next one is the mushroom fungus stem thickness, which is basically the stem that connects the caps to the mesh. You can change the thickness there. And there's a minimum and a maximum because um, there is some variation in the thickness of the of that curve, right? At the base, it's going to be a little bit thinner and it's going to grow out, go a little bit bigger. And there's some variation, so you can change the max and the minimum thickness of that as well. I can show you real quick. Let's change this to 0.5 and look over there. It's going to be changing um, the thickness a little bit. Um, 0.5 is not that much. Maybe set this to 1. You'll be able to really see what happens there. Um, so to one, you can see that it adds more thickness and you can even crank that more up if you want. I'm going to leave that at like the default value for now. And then I'm not even sure what the default value was anymore, but I'm just going to reset this to the default value. I assigned all the default values that I like. So if you reset them, you will get the values that I set pretty much. Next, we got the cap size, right? So that's going to mean that these are going to be bigger or smaller defined on what you give that value of the cap, right? So 0.15, for example, there's going to be making them a lot bigger. Um, give it a second. <laughs> and you get these huge mushrooms, which also can look very nice. And they're going to be growing together more um, when that happens as well, which is quite quite fun if you ask me so you want one maybe something in between you can even make them smaller if you like the smaller mushrooms right <clears throat> excuse me 0.05 for example is going to make it look a little bit smaller beautiful right default value Oop, there we go and we have the size of the mushroom caps the default value is quite high is what i see now i'll change that before you download it so i'm going to make the default value 
something like where is it um point oh seven five something like that and <clears throat> they depend on the length of the curve so the length of the the stem but also on well a little bit of a random value right so yeah we'll have some smaller caps and some bigger caps there's a smaller one behind so things like that and now we've got the stem noise scale of course so you can change i showed you it's going to be twirling a little bit and you can switch that um, to be stronger or to be less strong so they're going to be moving wilder or less wild i will move that closer to the actual stem um, settings there you don't have to worry about that right then we have well actually let me show you that if i set this to like one it's going to be moving it a lot stronger and give it some time there we go it's going to be a lot stronger but we don't have a lot of geometry now so it's going to look a little bit bad but once you really have some geometry there so if you um, have this value set to lower for example 0.4 then it's gonna really start twirling your mushrooms everywhere which can look very very beautiful um, like this it can make it look well, more chaotic more <laughs> like some weird species of mushrooms um, so don't worry about that I'm gonna reset that you can play around with that yourself right I set the noise to four which may even be <laughs> way too strong I can't remember what it was but the default failures will take care of it and then we have the next steps which is going to be the cup noise skill the cap noise skill it is very straightforward as well it basically makes your caps the mushroom caps um, twirl a little bit more as well displace a little bit more with the noise texture all right and then we've got the noise strength that's gonna make that noise stronger right it's very straightforward you can play around with that as you like and then we've got the next step it's the oyster fungus mushrooms right it's those parts right here on the mesh beautifully sitting on it and having a nice pattern and all right now you can change the the size of course the minimum size the maximum size you can make them bigger can look nice if I set this to 0.2 they will just be bigger and look quite nice as well all right so 0.2 for example you can see it makes them a lot bigger all right and you've got the minimum distance as well for example um I skipped the minimum distance because of sorry the minimum size doesn't really matter it's the same thing um and then we got the minimum distance for example if you change the size to be larger um, you can play around with the minimum distance between those for example if you don't like them being this densely packed you can just increase the distance of those oyster mushrooms and they will scatter them a little bit more across the mesh as well all right so keep that in mind i like them to be close to packed together that's what happens in real life as well i think so I'm just gonna stick to that a little bit more reduce that skill for a second and then we've got the density of those mushrooms we can add a lot more and also decrease that by a lot if we want play around with it <coughs> excuse me and then we've got the the noise scale of those mushrooms right you can see them um waving a little bit that's the noise of the displacement and we can just increase that scale of the noise right to make them just twirl more for example set this to like 3.5 you, you will see that they're gonna be twirling a little bit more and then we've got the noise strength as well which is just the strength of that noise right so if i now set this to be smaller it is going to just have less of an amplitude right it's going to move less away from the center so just play around with that i'm gonna just reset that for a second and there we go so you can see that even though there's a lot going on the geometry node system isn't really that slow at all right it is still quite all right and i really try to make everything as efficient as possible um so i hope it works for your system as well if it doesn't just change some of those resolution settings or just reduce the density of the mushrooms until you're at your like your final render okay beautiful beautiful now we've got the the other kind of mushroom it is the vein one right so if i rotate this around let me see let me find some of them right so for example on the back here we've got the vein mushrooms really really popping up there going over the head and th there's a lot of different settings there as well that we can tweak and uh, the, number one is the important one it's the length of the fungus right so that's basically gonna mean 
how much they're gonna grow, how long they're gonna grow. So if I set that to one, they're gonna be covering way more of the mesh, for example, length to one. Let's see it happen. Give it a second. So you can see it become thicker as well because it's gonna be longer and they cover more of that mesh, right? They're gonna be growing as far as they can. Now, if you set that to a lower value, for example, 0.3, it is only going to grow in small bits and it's not going to cover nearly as much of your mesh. I can't even, maybe I can't even find it now because it's so small. There's a few of them. Uh, 0.3 is very low. Maybe we can try 0.5 to make them pop up more. They may be uh, disappearing in the rest of the mushrooms now. 0.5. Let's see. Yeah, there's some, some of these lines coming back. I think the origin point is now just at a this an inconvenient location. There it is, the origin point. So point 0.5, um, point 0.3, uh, there will all just move closer to that origin point. Talking about the origin points, I'm going to set this back to point 0.7. We've got the starting vertex, and I'm skipping the fingers resolution for a second. The starting, res the starting vertex basically means which vertex of your object is going to be used as the starting position of those veins. They all have the same point where they're going to grow out of and then they're going to scatter over your object right so you can change that vertex by just setting a different value for example 300 and the amount that you can go up to depends on how many vertices you have in your mesh right it all depends on that so you can just play around with that try some different values um, and it will just change the starting location of those veins right so you can just really tweak where they're going to end up where they're going to start off so now they're starting there on the left and then moving over your mesh. And that's just what you can tweak, right? Another thing we have is the resolution, right? That resolution is very basic. If we increase that resolution to, for example, 15, you're going to be seeing more curves in those splines because they have more geometry to actually displace as well. There is a noise modifier in there to really give them some, some motion over the mesh. Right, so if you tweak that to be higher, it's going to have more geometry to curl, and you're going to see it right there. Probably, it's going to curl way more. Right, so that happens if you add more geometry, more resolution. Right, so if you make it lower, it's going to be easier in your system, but they're going to be more straight. So I'm going to leave that at like 10 for now. You can tweak that how you see fit. Now we've got the noise scale of those fingers and the noise strength as well. So if we want this to displace way more over the mesh, we can set this to higher values, 0.6 for example, and then those um, moving away from, from the starting points, right? The, um, the little motions, they're going to be stronger, right? So just play around with that. I can set it to one as well. And it's going to just be make it more organic, make those movements of the curls, the those veins, more organic on the mesh, right? So it's not going to be a straight line anymore, but it's really going to be strongly moving away from that origin line, which is quite beautiful. Now, we've got that branching resolution, right? The branching resolution is basically going to mean whether or not the, the branches are going to really move and branch off right so if they're going to branch off more you have more of those tiny little veins as well so let's set that to a lower amount for example 0.5 and see what happens we can see it all happen right in front of us right so if we decrease that resolution then there's just way less of a chance that it's going to actually branch off and it's going to just move straight forward in a single line um, I just kept this value at 1, I think, um, because anything above that really, really adds more stress on your system. Um, so I would rather just have you play around with the actual vein fungus resolution. Um, that is That may be a better, better point to play around with. The noise scale, the noise strength, that's really going to add a randomization to those curves as well. right? And it's just a little bit less harsh for your systems, <laughs> which may be nice. All right, then we've got that tip size. You can see those little mushroom pockets. They appear at like the veiny tips. You can increase their size. If you really like them to be big, you can just make them a little bit bigger as well. For example, make them two. Then those balls are going to be moving outwards, move bigger. You'll get some really nice mushroom pockets. Now with the vein fungus radius, of course, if you think those are too thick or too thin, you can just set that to be bigger or smaller, right? That's 
as easy as that. That's what it does. So you can see they're now just getting a little bigger. I like the bigger size, actually love it. And so now I'm actually going to show you some tweaks here, some material tweaks, right? Because we also have a lot of materials. So if I get that to the right, go to the material tab, there aren't any materials um, for me because I already have them in my Blender file. You will have to append the materials, all right? So you can either just open this file and work on that, or you can go to file, append, right? If you can just append the materials, that works fine as well. Now the materials you need is main mesh. That's gonna be the main material of the mesh, which is just the, um, well, the dirty, dead looking skin there. And we need another one that is going to be the fungus material, the caps of those mushroom fungus, the mushroom cap material. That's what you have to append as well. And you don't have to assign them to a material because the materials are assigned in the geometry node. So they just need to be in your file. And let's just hit plus one more time. Um, for the mushroom stems, these are separate materials, but they match quite well anyway. And uh, then we will also have another one for the oyster mushrooms. Give it a second. Oyster mushrooms. There we go. It's another material. And then we can hit that plus one more time for the final material, which are those veins, right? They all have their own material, which means you have a lot to tweak. If you really like some, some vibrant colors, you can change this to purple, green, yellow, whatever you need. So for those materials, it is quite important to know a few things, right? If I move this to the right a little bit, it's quite big, and change this to the shader editor, we are going to have a few different materials to work with. The main mesh, and I try to make this as straightforward as possible, right? And the thing that you're probably gonna be changing the most are those colors. So I will show you what which color actually does. The main one that's gonna be changing the colors is the mold, right? I added a color for mold because I want some noisy mold on there just to make it look dirty. And we can change that color to be, um, well, anything pretty much, blue, green, purple. And you can see it changing on the left there. It is basically the color of the main kind of um, degraded dead material in your scene, right? So I like that to be somewhere near the greenish the greenish materials, maybe a little bit blue there as well. All right, something like that. And then we have the other material and there is the main material. So this is gonna be making up the main colors of your mesh as well. This brown, you can really make that lighter if you like it to be um, a different material as well. And that's gonna play really nicely together with the mold as well. So this is like the main, the main material that you can change as well. Um, I can't really remember what I had it set on. I think I liked it somewhere darker, brownish. And we have uh, another primary color, color that we can tweak. And that's gonna add, well, it's just a little of an accent. You can see it really appear um, on those those edge points there. Um, it's not gonna do much, but it can be enough to give it a little bit of a, of a highlight there. All right, then we've got a very interesting part, right? We've got um, the contact accent, and that's basically the contact color of those veins, anything that is basically touching that mesh, right? So if I, for example, zoom out a little bit, never change this color to be lighter, and if I just move this around, you can see where those colors change. For example, we get blue there now, and that's basically the contact color between the mushrooms and the mesh, right? Because they are touching the mesh, uh, infecting the skin, for example. That's why I had it set at like a, um, what did I have it set at? Um, some kind of a, or a little pinkish dark skin color, right? To really just make it look like that skin is irritated, right? And that's something I like a lot. Now you can also change that other yellow color and that is going to really change the main parts of the mesh color as well. All right, so that is just some colors you can tweak around and play with. Um, now we've got that wound. We have a wound. Yes, that's right. Um, for places where the fungus connects to our mesh. Uh, let me find a real nice point there. Something clear, something clean. Here we go. There the fungus is connected to the mesh. And I wanted it to look like there's actually 
um, a wound there, right? The fungus is growing out of skin, for example. So I want it to look like there's actually a wound, a flesh wound there, where the mushrooms are growing out of. It destroys the skin, punctures a hole, grows out of it, right? So I also wanted to make that appear out of that. So that material spot, it comes straight out of the geometry nose. It takes the input of where those mushrooms grow out of, and I added a few noise textures, color textures, to make this really look like a dirty flesh wound. Right, so you can tweak all those colors there as well. Um, so we have the wound tissue, those are the main darker parts there. You can change those colors. We've got the wound core color, so that's really the, the color in there in between. So if I change that, for example, uh, let's see. If I change that to be more bluish, you can see that those core flesh wound colors are going to change right so that's just something you can tweak if you if you want all right um anything else we need well we've got the main mold noise for example we've got some noise textures um so you can just play around with that however you like i named all of the groups you know what the bump does stuff like that you know right now we've got those mushroom caps very easy material not hard at all uh, we can tweak some basic colors. Um, I really, really liked to have some strong subsurface scattering. You can see what it does if we just turn it off. Um, but I really liked it with it on because if light shines through it, it really changes the look of that as well, which is just something very beautiful. Right? Amazing. Now, next up, we have the material for, let's see, the mushroom stem, right? And that's very easy as well. We have basically one color. The subsurface color is going to really change that as well. Um, and so that is something you can tweak bump colors or sorry, bump strength. We've got the oyster mushrooms, right? So those are the uh, these ones. You can change some of these colors. You can change the bump strength, the wave texture there. And um, you can see if I really zoom into that, we have some very small details on that material just to make it look more realistic. And you can change the the, the, the strength, or sorry, the, the colors there to anything you really like. If you like blue ocean mushrooms, make it happen. If you like green ones, make it happen. Like pink ones, make it happen. You know the drill. You know how to change the colors. Last one is the veins. And this is the easiest one of all. Uh, because I wanted to keep this nice and clean. I basically have three things in there. It's the main material, main color, right? Principal BSDF with one easy uh, white color. Um, a yellow color and the other one you can see on the sides there those are the contact colors right so where are they closer to the mesh it is basically an ambient occlusion node and so we can change that value to be whatever we need we can make it darker if we want a really hard contrast to be on that mesh or we can even make that red if you want to make it look like it is infected um by the different parts of the fungus or if it's like um, being affected by the mesh as well um, so you can tweak that as you like now as i had before i like the subsurface scattering on this so uh, those darker parts on the sides they will have some subsurface scattering on it as well we can turn that off um but i'd like it with it on really and we can change that color as well if you we, if we really want us to be look Looking more nasty, we can change that to more greenish, for example. Right, so that's the basic materials that you can change. Now, my god, we're coming to an end here. But the one thing I need to show you still is how you can make this work for your own models. And that is probably something you're going to be very interested in. Because you're not all going to be making Suzanne, I guess. Right, so how do we make that work? Well, it's not that hard, actually. If I just move this one to the side a little bit let me turn off my displays there we have one object but we can tweak this and add this to one other object for example let's shift a mesh and let's just search for a torus right the donut it's a very basic object and i'm going to add a subsur subdivision modifier just to add some more geometry you don't have to but i'm going to do it anyway Right, and then we can just hold shift and select our Suzanne, the one with the geometry nodes, control L, and then we can just copy the modifiers. And it's going to be copying all of those modifiers of the other Suzanne head, for example, right there. And you can see how fast that was. Um, so that is just something that works very well. Now we can rotate this, see what happens on the other side. Um, for example, we can add more mushroom fungus density there if we think there isn't enough. 
we can really just change the merge distance to be lower as well. Um, and that will just make our mesh have a little bit more geometry to really work with. You can see we now add a lot more details. We get a lot more fungi there, um, which is just looking amazing, right? So you can do this for any shape. For example, if we want that to be on, I don't know, I don't want this to be an too easy mesh. Let me actually delete Suzanne and work with this. And we can just go to the Blender kit, for example, as well. And just search for anything. Um, what do we want to be a fungus? Let's go for a skull or something, right? A skull, I really want to challenge this with a dare skull, for example. Now, there's one thing already. And that is the size of the skull. And that's also going to be one thing that I can actually show you now, right? Because I made those geometry nodes to work with any skill. So this better damn well work with a small skill like that as well. So I'm going to select it. Hold shift, select my donut, control L, and just copy modifiers. And it's going to take a while. It may be because uh, the dimensions of the skull are a little bit weird, right? It's stretched a little bit more in the um, the width dimension. And the Z dimension is quite small. So the rescaling depends on one of those axes. So if the axis is a little bit um, off regarding the dimensions, then... The rescaling can be a little bit off as well, but it shouldn't be too much. So let's just wait a second while this loads up here. <laughs> right, um, it works. Um, the scaling is a little bit off, as you can see, and we're going to fix that uh, very, very quickly. But I want to just give you a quick quick heads up. The reason why this took so long is because I also copied the subdivision modifier. And the deer skull mesh is incredibly dense by itself. So I tried to subdivide a hugely high resolution mesh on this square. We moved the subdivision modifier for this one. And it should be working a little bit faster. Right, there we go. Now you can see that it works, but the skill is still a little bit off. And, well, there's a, a very simple reason for that. And that's because the first geometry nodes that we're using reskills it, but it, it's going to depend on a specific axis, for example. Right? If we look here, it's going to depend on the y-axis, which means that if the y-axis of the skull is very long, for example, right? We've got those horns and stuff, so it, it makes it quite, quite long there. Um, it's really going to alter the dimensions a little bit and it's gonna not gonna have the perfect skill for our skill right but it doesn't matter because we can just tweak that with that value the overall fungus skill so if i set this to be longer 0.4 for example it's going to very well tweak that to have a better dimension so we really get that skill back we're really gonna get that that fungus system nice even though just watch it even though the object is incredibly small, right? It still works very nicely with all of those values. And we can now just rescale that still if we want to have it nicer um, together with the rest of the objects. But you can see that it works incredibly well with any skilled object. And with any object, you pretty much get out of that Blender kit. Do you want to try one more? Let's try one more. Why not? Let's find another skill, but I want this one to be like a human. Let's do a female skill. Female! There we go. There's text above it as well. I hope that is not part of the actual mesh because that's going to mess it up a little bit. I'm just going to delete the text. And let's just scale this down a little bit, move it up. And let's just bring this a little bit forward. And I'm not going to rescale it. Once again, I want to show you that it works with this, this skill as well. Um, I'm just going to hit Shift select my other mesh Control l and copy those modifiers right let's see what happens now this is an interesting one because we got some nice holes going on in the mesh and stuff like that so it's going to be an interesting fungus system for sure and let's give it a second to load up here there we go took about five seconds but we really have a densely packed skull mesh now even as much as us losing a bit of the, the visuals of the skull. You can still see the holes and stuff, but it was really overgrown with the fungus. But you can see the original shape of the skull is in there somewhere in the overgrown section. If you want to see more of the skull, of course, tweak the settings, um, reduce the density a little bit. We can even add some more overall fungus scale, for example, that will just make it a little bit bigger the entire fungus system so you can see that it works very well with pretty much any type of mesh right and that is just something that i really wanted to 
place some some emphasis on in this geometry node setup you don't have to worry about having the perfect scale the perfect dimensions the perfect mesh it works with anything you throw at it which is perfect all right so now there is one more way to actually add this on your own mesh and for example if i remove all of these nodes i'm just gonna scale this up for a second so if i scale this up move this to the left a little bit and just apply the scale there is another way to add the systems and that is by just adding the modifiers right add geometry nodes add geometry nodes add geometry nodes remember we need three First one is going to be the skill mesh and fungus. Last one is going to be the reskill mesh and fungus. There we go. It's going to be gone now. And the reason why is because Blender doesn't really like storing values um, for some reason. So what we need to do is two things. Very easy. Go to the output attributes of that first and just name this OG skill. Now go to the last one. Click the little toggle button and just select the OG skill there. That's it. That's all you need to do if you do this, right? And then for the second one, of course, we need to add our fingers generator. Now give it a second to load up there. And that should be as easy as that. Beautiful. Now just change the overall fingers scale if you think this is too big. Uh, for example, set this to 0.4. Um, just have a little bit of a play around with that. Give it some time to charge it up. And that is if you want to, for example, append the geometry nodes in a file you already have, right? Instead of actually using the file that you downloaded, then this works as well, right? There we go, looking all beautiful, all great and stuff, right? So we really have that cool, amazing look at that. I really love this a lot. Now, there's just one more thing we need to do when we append the geometry nodes and add them by hand. And well, that's just another attribute that we need to name, right? This fungus dam indents, that's also used in the materials, right? And we need to name this, what did I name this? Something like indent, I guess. It's gonna make the indent material and that's really going to add that indent color to the mesh again, right? You can see it right there. Um, otherwise, it's not going to take uh, that material into account and it's not going to provide the placements of those mesh flesh wounds. It's not going to deliver it to the actual shader, right? So make sure to name this indent. So the three things you need to do is name this OG skill, name this output indent, and add the OG skill back in the final geometry node setup right there. Okay, that's all you need to do if you're gonna be adding them by hand. Beautiful. Right, well, that is it for the tutorial. It is not really a tutorial, it's more of an explanation of how this works if you decide to get it. It's two or three dollars, so I hope you can now see the effort that, uh, that went into making this into the geometry nodes and the uh, materials as well took a long time. So I really hope you enjoy that and I hope you can use this to fungify any kind of object you throw at it, right? Really, really get crazy with it and show me the results as well. Now, uh, that is the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can use it for something and thank you so much for watching once again. And if you liked it, please leave a like, a comment, or subscribe. I would be incredibly thankful for any of those. And then I'll see you in the next one. And the next one is going to be another Geometry Notes setup that I made. So you're going to enjoy that. Bye-bye.